Right, in this video, uh, this is a Mark 8 Honda Civic, so it's a 2007 diesel. Uh, there's a common fault with the aircon, and uh, it doesn't always come on. The uh, relay sticks, and so a new, new relay has to be changed. So I'm getting no aircon in the car, and of course. Well, you check is if you run it, put the full air con on, and down there the clutch should turn, but the clutch is not turning, so I can't add air con on. I can't even check if there's any air con on or not, or whether it's full or not. Uh, so, there's a trick the fuse for the air con is. There's the fuse, number seven. So it's that one there. So the, uh, but the actual relay, is that with a little snow sign? Is that one? So we're gonna run it and uh, check, confirm that the clutch is not turning. And then what we're gonna do is tap it with a, with a back of a screwdriver or something to see if it's a sticking relay. Now, there is a problem, of course, which is there could be so little aircon fluid that the clutch won't turn. And if that's the case, if that's the case then, I've just noticed on my car here, some water ingress. I can't see the VIN number, there's some water vapors there. So I perhaps I need to clean the, um, or change the filter on the inside of the car. Right, okay, so back to my point. If there's too little aircon fluid, what it means is you're gonna have an issue, it won't turn anyway. So we'll tap it, see if it turns. If not, I have to change the relay, then try and uh, try and get it going. From doing a little bit of preliminary investigation, normally it's add a bit of uh, Freon, not Freon, R134 Alpha, so a bit, of, a bit of juice to the system and it gets going or it's the relay. I think it's not the relay and I think it's not the juice. It could be the clutch on the uh, compressor. But what I'm going to do, because I had some abnormal readings from testing out the, the relay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let my theories pan out by testing out on, my, on a car, the Ford Focus on the relay system on there just to prove to myself just to show you guys what it should look like and prove to myself yes that's what it should look like when it works properly right so let's uh, test out the fourth focus you can see down there the clutch is not turning you can't get a light on it That is not turning. Okay, try tapping it. Now it's totally dead. So I'm gonna have to get a relay before. Or I can do my trick where I uh, bypass it. So I might do that instead. Then get him. So pulling out the relay. It's idiot proof on this one. It's got a little knob just there. Uh, what does it say there? Can't read it. Omicron GHHL hyphen H71. 12 volts made in USA. There is a specification, I'll try and leave that if I remember underneath uh, for this particular relay. It's not exactly what it says here, it's quite a long winded number. Right, notice. I've stuck my little relay gapping tool in there and make sure it fits nice and snug. You know, it's not going to bounce up and down or anything like that, it keeps sparking, it'll cause a lot of problems. So the two, it goes in like that little knob there, little gap there. 
the two bigger ones is the two higher <coughs> higher voltage higher current and the controlling DC 5 volt is the two smaller ones so that's the one that's connected inside your uh, switch inside your engine uh, your compartment passenger driver compartment and this is where it's coming from the engine so the uh, re relay's job is to control high current high voltage or even probably low voltage on this one 12 volts high current by using a safety switch so the switch is the high current is not inside your car right so i bypassed it so it's permanently on so i don't know whether or not it's because it's low ac fluid or not i don't know but we're going to run it but there is some ac fluid in it so we know it's not going to burn out the clutch or anything like that so that's what you don't want to do so what i do is just start the engine Right, so it's not turning, the clutch is not turning. So this, if this was working, it would be clicking as I try to turn the AC on, but it's not clicking. So there's no clicking. So it's not really sending the power out. And if you, I've really checked the fuse, the fuse is okay. It's not sending the power out. To turn the clutch. So it could be a seized clutch. Or it could be, every connection between the uh, between the signal the power and the clutch right, just doing a bit of an investigation before I conclude it could be anything or have an idea what if it's anything I've got my continuity tester now disconnected both terminals in the battery now I don't want to get electrocuted. Or, you know, sometimes it's difficult to work out what's going on. I might fry something. So the battery's not connected. Right, so battery's not connected. I connect one probe to the... Uh, so if I was looking at this, would plug in. I'm connecting that terminal in there. And if I ground it on the chassis, I'm getting a good ground. So... There is ground connection between that terminal and the ground, so there's no broken wires there. Okay. Now, if there was power coming from the battery, somehow, if the battery is powering it, which it's not, then there should be a continuity, which means there should be a connection on my multimeter between the other terminal, this one here. And this, uh, the wiring of the positive, and there is. No, so if I put, there is, there is continuity. So, and did you just notice that when I put it on there, there is continuity between the ground and the positive. If I was to swap it the other way around, continuity here, but. And, There's a car going by. You're not here. That must be ground. So this one must be connected to the positive. Uh, so I don't think there is a uh, problem with with the wiring. There must be the clutch seas. So in that case, if I find the time at some point, I'm going to try and turn the clutch. I haven't got time today, but anyway, I was going to add aircon onto it, but there's no point now. I'll check the aircon. That was the whole point of this. All right, so some point, another day, another day, I'll continue this video and I will try and turn the clutch and try and free it that way. All right. Another day might be very sunny, by the way, so I'm calling it a day on. Right now I've got an assistant, we can uh, check if it clicks before I do make any more uh, conclusions. Press the button. Press the button again. No clicking. Press the button. Press the button again. Press the button. Press the button again. So it could be that is 
there's no input and there's no signal telling it to do anything. Right, doesn't mean they're clutches. So one of the things is, I will test the clutch. To see if it's stuck by trying to spin it, basically. To see if it's a... St so, well, it's, it's spinning now. The, 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 the centre core is spinning, but... Is anything sending anything out to the stators to get the clutch to hang on? Or is the clutch just kind of stuck and it won't move? Or I, I don't know. So, uh, or is it an electrical fault where he's pressing the button, this is not clicking? Is it not clicking because this is broken? But we know we bypassed it and that's still not going. So, there was definitely an AC fault on this. Right, so forward focus, there's my AC clutch. Now, when it normally it normally runs the belt would drive the pulley but this if I've got the aircon off this outer clutch will not engage it will not spin it will just stay like it is it will just sort of sit there like that if it is engaging what you do is you see like a blur you know it doesn't even look like it's spinning but if you see like a blur it means it is working right so obviously the engines off if we turn the engine on I should turn it on on a good AC system uh, with no aircon on so next all right so just vary it so you can get in there in view no. so here it is the clutches engines on clutch is not spinning but obviously a belt spinning around the out edges uh, or the inside of the uh, the the AC pulley all right so now if I turn on the air now if it focuses the difference is now it's a blur. It looks like a blur and basically it's spinning. The clutch is engaged and it is engaged all the time at the moment. So sometimes it cycles on and off. There it is, uh, see how it's a blur. At the moment it's on all the time, which is fine. Next test on the right next test on the Ford Focus. Here's the manual and R11 is the relay 11 for the air conditioning system so on a normal normal working air conditioning system r11 air conditioning clutch oops so r11 is this one here right so the next test is i'm gonna put my finger on it and hope for he feel a click yes i felt a click so I didn't feel a click when I asked for it to turn off, but turn it back on. Yes, I felt a click. You can just almost hear a click. Turn it off. If I take it really close, you might both hear a click. Just about hear that. All right, so that's working as normal. Turns the clutch on and off, on and off. So when we, it's more easy, a bit uh, easier to see now, now I've got an assistant so turn it off turn it off turn it on turn it off it's not cycling as quick as I want it to but obviously it's on so it's on I think it must have some sort of fail so to please don't mess around the button but anyway the switch was cycling on and off keep it off for a second yep all right, so probably what happened, no wonder I sometimes, ah, oh, there it is. So sometimes when I when I use it, use the air conditioning, it takes a little while to come off and that's probably why it's got a delay in it. Right, so next test, I'm gonna pull this out and I'm gonna test the circuits. I'm gonna, I'll point to it now. Put it out and test the circuits on the board. I know the relay's working. Engine's off, pull out. This R11, oh, relay 11, and a white stripe on it. Oh, it's kind of stiff, but it's never been pulled out before. Right, okay, here we go. Four pin, never seen it before, pulled out. So, Ford Motor Company, 5M, 5T, 14B, 192AA. 145121D. It's a 12 volt 
I guess that's the part number there. I'm going to read all that out. Right, so I'm going to test this as well. I'm going to put that safely to one side in case it bounces off the engine. Right, so that was it where location was. Oh, if we look at it, the two smaller pins, well, I remember, the two smaller pins are the control, so there's someone connected to inside your dashboard. The um, two bigger ones, that's where the battery is connected to, and that's the one that runs the actual air compressor, uh, air conditioner. All right, so with it in the off state, I'm going to test out the, uh, the voltage. Set the thing to 20 volts DC. And uh, let me have a look at that again. The two small ones are the ones at the side, so that it went in like white straight. Must have gone in like that, like that. Went straight down there. All right. So the two small ones are these two small ones. So stick my probe boom. There's nothing in the middle for the middle one. And. Testing the voltage. If you see on the multimeter, no volts. That's normal, is it? Yeah. Right? If it's normal on that, you just stick it into it. Shoves in there properly. There it is. It's shoving in properly now. So no, zero volts. All right. So now, if the car's switched on, oh, let's have a look. There should be voltage across here two power terminals there you go 12 volts so it's running all the time so when that when when you, when it's switched on in the engine the control will flip over the switch in there, and that's the click and it sends power through the two existing power terminals through there through there so the switch is closed through there it runs and runs the uh, AC motor uh, AC motor clutch okay so now with the engine on I'll cycle it on and off ask my helper so I can on and off, you'll see the voltage change. <coughs> right, this time engine's running, we'll do the same thing. So nothing's on at the moment, AC is not on. We should get, if it fits in there, pushing against it, nothing, which is fine. The control sending no signal out. Oh, okay, now it's pushing against it. We're getting, oh, okay, this is what we need to find out. It's getting nothing, nothing, no. Did, did you see it jump a little bit? So it's kind of like reading something, but not, not enough to trigger that switch. Oh, just leave that. All right, so, switch it on. Okay, so it's on, apparently. And you swap these terminals. Oh, on. So this is what I'm trying to investigate. These things are odd. I'm sending no voltage across. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my T pin. Two T pins stuck together in terminals. Okay, so the engine, the, the car is still sending out a voltage but the car's only just been switched off and the electrics are still on so there's an 8 volt across it okay that's interesting that's how it should be so this is a good car 8 volts across it with the engine switched off you can still hear it ringing the, the engine's still ringing I'm just wait a little bit just when the engine completely stops uh, to see what see what the now with the kind of diagnostic thing the sound of the, the, the end, everything turning off, touching it again, no voltage, which is fine, which is normal, right? So now, let's get the engine on. Touch down, press down. Oh, 
Alright, so we're going to get our eight volts again, aren't we? So I'm just trying to figure out what on earth's going on with these things. So there we go, we've got eight volts, DC. Okay. I've, I've just given a thumbs up to cycle the aircon on. So obviously the aircon's not going to turn because. Alright, so cycle it off. Off. Cycle it on. Off. I think the voltage just changes a little bit. It almost just kind of changes and then it changes things, doesn't it? Is it off, is it? Off, yeah. On. Is that the thing that makes it click? Is it change? Is it on, is it? Off. On. There is, seems to be a little bit of a change when it when the button is pressed. Right, so we're getting data, that's all I'm trying to Just gonna wait for the engine to completely turn off before I plug this in. I may not like it, so only plug in something when it when we know there's voltage going across it. So waiting for all the sounds to stop. So we've got some information. When we turn it on, turn it off, is there seems to be when the engine's on there seems to be a, a constant eight volts across these two. Remember that number, and it was 12 across these two. So eight, suddenly so it switches, changes, and it turns on the aircon. The compressor, the, the, the clutch. It doesn't necessarily go up, it kind of drops even. Maybe when, when, when it's eight, eight volts, that's when it's closed. And when the voltage drops to zero, that's when it flips over, and it just, when, when it's... Zero it flips over and it stays flipped over and when it's back up to eight it flips back the other way maybe something like that. But something's happening. Something's changing it. Give it a few minutes more. Well I've checked the uh, aircon and uh, the clutch is engaging. It's off now and then back on. So everything's normal. No problems there. So it's just to be investigated so it comes to with my Honda. Over to the Honda. Notice there's a, a lot fewer relays. One and two, that's it. Looking on the lid, there is, I hope the light is reflecting okay for you. There's a fuse on number seven, seven and a half amp, and that's that one there, the red one. And that's the, that, if it blows, obviously nothing's gonna work. That is connected to that relay there. So remember, this is the Mark 8 Honda UK. 2.2 CTDI. That's that one there. Right. So let's uh, let's check it out. Right. Okay. Let's check if the clutch is turning. Yesterday I retested it, where I got my assistant to turn the switch on and off, and the uh, relay was not turning. Down there, two feet down there, and the light on. There is the stationary right? Come over here to the dash, switch the aircon on. Oops, that was on. Well, right, okay, so it was on already. Uh, you can tell by it. there it's on. And then, uh, well, we didn't have anything. Turn up full blast. Going on down there, cool. Alright, so that's the control and that's the whoops, that's the control and that's the power. Alright, so that fits in like so. Uh, so two terminals at the back is where I want to test. Move that out of the way. 20 volts. Thunder, sounds like thunder. Right, so, 
with the engine off. It's much easier to probe than this, so I can stick it straight in. Nothing, nothing at all, which is normal. Turn the engine on, key on only, let's have a look. Motors are running, I mean blower motor, but not, um, engine's not running. Here. So we've got, there we go, similar voltage, haven't we? Swap these over. See, while we're getting something similar to that. Sticking them too straight in there. Careful. It's eight point something. Yep, yeah, eight point something. So you can see this. Uh, let's put it down here like that. All right, so. Aircon is off, engine's on. What have we got? We've got minus. Oh, okay, not minus. We've got 11 volts. That's a lot higher than before, isn't it? So, right. So, we'll see if there's any changes. I just ask for it, give it a thumbs up, turn it on. Is it on yet? Turn it off. Turn it on. It does change a little bit, notice that. Turn it off. So when it's off, it's 10.58. Turn it on. Yes, it does change. And we are on here, we should be on 12. Oh, 14, all right. All right, it's okay. So it is doing something, just giving it. So, let's do one more thing, or well, a couple more things. Right, so now, the reason why I had that uh, long extension bar is I'm going to do, I'm going to whack the clutch. There's some, a couple of nice bolts there. You're going to hit it. And in a minute, it's a bit risky. But I can't see it rebounding on me, hopefully. If it does, it'll break everything in my body, probably. So, whacked it. And in a minute, when, when things are spinning, I'm gonna do the same thing. Get my, just really charge sharply, hit it and run away kind of thing, yeah? So. Right. not spinning. Not spinning. So after whacking it, it's not spinning, but now, I'm going to whack it while, while the engine is turning, be careful. And good jolt, not spinning, not spinning. So, one last experiment, change the relays to a good relay from the Ford. Let's have a go at that. I know they're not the same relays, but... What should we do? Plug the Ford one in, they look the same. Plug it into the you know, plug in plug it into the whoops sorry I missed the camera. Plug the Ford one into the Honda. Working on the same principle. But it might get triggered at a different voltage. No, it won't work. It's triggering at a different voltage. It would be a stupid thing to do. Right, I'm going to buy another relay. Right, I've jacked the car up or put it on the ramp. Now, the test what I did yesterday, where I remember the two sh smaller, uh, two smaller connectors here. They're the control and that's the power. That's the power to the main compressor. Now it's very risky, I just want to add, it's very risky to try and do what I did. Don't do what I did, I've done it, you can see the results, you can see that there's a, if you connect the uh, multimeter across these two terminals, there's a voltage and it kind of fluctuates a little bit, especially on the Ford, uh, and that's the thing that switches over. Don't fully understand what that is, I thought it would be like zero volts, 
crank it on, switch the button on, voltage goes across, flips the switch, right? It's not like that. We can see now that it's, it's, like a, it's steady at eight point something on the volt four, and then it's steady at 11, so and it just tiny, tiny little bit of it changes. So we're learning something all the time. I didn't know this, but my point is, remember when I put the two T-pins uh, next to these, these two terminals at the back? Very risky to do that. If the T-pins touch each other, uh, what could have happened is my computer would have been fried, probably most likely. There's been a massive surge, be no coil there, because in this there's a coil, right? There's a coil resisting the, uh, the current flow. It's okay to do this though. It's absolutely fine to do what I did yesterday and do this. This is okay because there's a coil, there's a resistance in this in this multimeter. So obviously like now, and I forgot to do one test. This you can do. You can put one one of the probes gently in and then ground the other. There's a ground just just here. All right. You can do that and then to test the other. If you see. If you see uh, a voltage, that's not the control. The control would be the other side, the side where there's no, no voltage. Right, so we, there's none on both because the car's not on. There's a tiny bit, a bit, little bit there. But don't, don't shove this in. And notice on these probes it is, it's like, you know, like a flappy thing, like a circular kind of flappy thing. It stops you from put, putting these two too close together. So when you do this, you know, you put, it, it's possible you can touch the terminals of the probes together and shorten it, huh? and then knock out your, your computer up. But because they're in a way, it kind of restriction, because you've got to do this. So this is okay to do. All right, so let's turn the uh, power on only. The engine's not on. On. I've got it up on the ramp because I'm going to test the, uh, the compressor later on, Compress test the clutch in the compressor, add power to it manually. So here we go again, here's my 9 volts and I think it went up to, when the engine's on it went up to 11, could that be the issue? Should it be on 9 volts and not at 11? So when it drops there's no, so I'm somehow I'm getting an extra voltage or something, not sure. Right, so let's, because there's no picture diagrams on that on that um, relay at all. Let's put, test one end. So I'm doing this this side. Negative three volts. That's interesting, isn't it? So I've got nine. I reckon this might be a twelve. You know. Yeah, that's right. So it's ah look. Ne nearly 12 volts, yep. 12 volts, and what's the voltage of my battery? Probably at 12.4, same sort of voltage. 12.7, I'm dropping somewhere, but look, this is nearly battery voltage. So that's, right, okay, it's 12, nearly 12, 11 and a half. And there's my three, subtract one from the other, we get our nine. So there's already a three volt there, there's already a a twelve there, eleven and a half there. This is all information, isn't it? So the control side's on this side, the lower voltage one. Now, ah, okay. So when when I switch the aircon on, so there's eight volts in, in between. The engine's not on. It's possible when I actually turn the thing, when I actually switch the button on. It boosts this side up to, so the control boosts it up to uh, 11 and a half as well. So let's turn the engine on. Right, this is all information, isn't it? It's all information trying to figure out how on earth these things work, and it's not so straightforward. So we've got our, now it's the difference is. 10.49, 11 volts, and the same control voltage now, it was at, it's still about, still about 3, 2, 3, fluctuating a bit, and this side, the 
still about the same. Oh, it's gone up a bit. So that's gone up a bit. This is about the same. Ah, so the control size is on this side. And the difference has gone up because there's more voltage on this side. So there is a difference. So the, I don't think I've got the aircon on. Let's turn the aircon on with the engine on. Aircon on, engine on. The, the difference in voltage now is 10, 11. That's about the same. And that has dropped. 12.5, wasn't it? And the difference between them, I need to write this down. Uh, it's too early in the morning. 10.46. Okay. So it drops. Control size on this side. Let me just confirm that again once more. Voltage difference is 10.46. Aircon off. 10.5. On, just over three on this side. So this is uh, we're just finding information. On, on. Okay, it's 3.5. Oh, oh, that is the control car, right? The voltage drops when I turn the aircon on. And that's what's flipping the switch, is a little bit of a shift. So I bought a new relay. I'm going to do one, a couple more tests at the clutch. That's why I'm going to take the under panel off. I'm going to do a separate video how to take the under panel off on this thing. And it's a, a voyage of adventure for me because it's, I haven't done it yet and it's quite complicated. From look now with the bottom tray off, so you can see daylight and there should be a gap between the clutch on the compressor and uh, there it is, you can see it now that's the body of the compressor, there's the clutch so if it was working that would kind of get the gap would well, there should be a gap, make sure there's a gap and then there is otherwise it's stuck and it's permanently on so it should, when when electricity on it should get sort of push, get pushed inwards so I'm going to do that test now uh, for how they take the under tray off, see one of my other videos that I've done, it's quite awkward. Whilst I'm down here, check the condition of the belt properly. Check if there's any cracks or anything. A slight bit of cracks okay, but because this is a, I want them auxiliary belts. That's fine, there's my uh, crankshaft pulley. Uh, and here you can see the gap clearly. It rotates freely, even though know, I whacked it, whacked the hell out of it yesterday. That's okay. Wonder if I can see if there's any. Well, I won't better turn the rest of them. There's an idler pulley somewhere up the top. That one there, I think that's the tensioner up there. My finger's pointing that one. I think it is, I'm not sure. Well, actually, I'm going to test it. I'm going to stick a, stick a long wrench and then pull it anti clockwise to see if the belt loosens. Looking at the base of this clutch, I unplugged this from here and it kind of feeds back into there where it rejoins. If I feel the other end, it just kind of is like a joint just there, like a connection, and it comes back round into the clutch just here. It kind of splits off into two wires here, and there's my clutch. And uh, this should be my input. 
in here. So, the difference between that and ground should be the same as up there. Do you remember what it was? So we can always check that out again. So I might make sure, remember I was fiddling around up here. Make sure your spanner's not there. I couldn't, I couldn't get a proper spanner to fit in there to loosen this. But make sure you've got nothing, you know, you've checked it. This ain't in the way, so nothing's gonna get caught. Maybe don't go on the engine now. Well, if you do, just stay well away from moving parts now. All right, so I'm gonna put a probe in here in a second. Well, I'll put a probe in here and uh, test it against the body of the car. There was no voltage going across. So that's uh, interesting. The uh, electric was on, but the aircon's off. I'm going to plug in now uh, the relay. Same, same, same again. I think relay is all in. Nothing with the engine on. Aircon on. No difference. Same effect. Last test. My. Uh, cheap version of the power power tester whatever they're called I remember but this one's much cheaper power probe that's it so one end ground I'm gonna supply now not super duper sure but I don't see any other cables this one does of course the engine off there's no other cables no electrical cables connected to the clutch Right, so, right, give it a ground. Let's have a look. That do, a bit rusty. A bit rusty. Uh, let's put the ground and lose it. Let's try that. Right. So, I better film this. I'm laying my camera flat. I'm going to stick that probe in there. And, uh, how far I reach? It's going to reach that far. A neat, tiny little needle. Is there another spot? Yeah. I'll stick a T-pin in there. Again. Now, I wasn't sure if my ground was any good, so I tested it here. There you go, it's good. That's one way to do it. Now watch. As I, re oh. As I rest, I'm at the end of that and ready to press the supply power to it. Look at that. Watch, I don't know if I can capture it in one go. Okay. No clicking, but look. Watch the end of that. Watch the end of that clutch. I'm sure I can do it with both of them at the same time. See it? See it in that clutch move? Whether or not that's enough to engage it, I don't know. But it is moving. So. I'm thinking, look, if there was power supplied to it, that clutch is going to engage. That's what I'm thinking. Definitely. If that clutch was good, you would give power to it. It's going to engage. So, so I know it could be something wrong with the cable going from here to the supply, even though the relay switched on. And the, and the switch flipped over. 
So it could be it could be the relay, it could be the relay. Relay is busted, so flip switch is not flipped over. I'm not bridging the uh, I'm not bridging it. So the only way I can do it is to bridge it. Be careful when you bridge it, you don't bridge the control side, just bridge the power side and then I should get power to this. That's my very last test. Right, so I put a jump I jumped the two very very sure you do this if you jump the wrong two you fry the computer so only jump the one you're absolutely sure is the power one the way to do that is to use what I did the power probe stick one in there uh, stick the clamp there and, and supply power to these two and if it goes click 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 you know you these are the control do not jump them right so go underneath turn it on and see if there's any power this time As you can see, uh, it's quite difficult. I am getting Rip. Yeah, 14 volts, 13 volts. So that's straight. This time, when I jump the lead, I'm getting 14 volts so straight from the alternator voltage, uh, straight from the mains, straight in there. Should be enough to engage the clutch when I jump the lead. So really, is that clutch kind of just moving very slightly, only slightly? So it's a clutch fault, right? It's not clamping on strong enough. All right, so relays you're not going to do any good we'll, we'll see all right thanks for watching please like and subscribe so it could be a clutch replacement on this in another video all right the relay i'll test the relay in another video as well a new relay see what happens now oddly enough just as i was about to finish what i did was i put a pry bar between the gap between the clutch plate and the body of the air, air compressor air conditioning presser and it kind of like instead of being able to turn the thing it became stuck obviously my jumper lead is still jumped so when i start the car now watch this so is it a dirty kind of clutch is it a worn clutch probably a worn clutch i mean ideally i would change it Look, see it spinning away nicely there and there's gap and there's, a, there's still a gap between it but when i stop the engine there's a gap uh, it disappears and I can't, be able, I can't turn it anymore, so I might not be able to show it, but I'm going to just turn the engine off. What I'm going to do is obviously charge my uh, R134 Alpha fluid whilst I've got it spinning, look. See that? Nothing's on, keys off. See, I can't turn that anymore. That's like permanently stuck on or whatever. So there's, uh, it's a clutch problem. It's a worn clutch. Now it's permanently stuck up. But, so I stuck a pry bar between there, wiggled it around and to, to see what happened. And maybe it's, and I've also, I've sprayed some brake cleaner in there. So, uh, I don't know. I'm gonna charge it up and see how it goes. So a dirty worn clutch can maybe be refurbished by spraying brake cleaner in and wiggling around a bit. No, don't, I mean, don't pry it too much, but anyway, I'll put a, I'll run it, put a description on it, how it goes after a while, when I upload the video, but really, thanks for watching, interesting. Right, spare parts just come in, here's the part number for the relay, so, I'm going to test it out immediately, it's in the dark though. Right, so it's about the, uh, about the new relay, it's not working of course. So we'll try with the relay in just a second. So a new relay did not make a difference. So it's why I anticipate it's the clutch. Right? Or it could be a new relay and lowering uh, fluid. Alright, so... Right, according to the Haynes manual, so on the Honda Civic 2.2 .2 
2007. That's the tensioner. And there's a central line between, see the bottom line and the top line. And it's saying there's a, there's a range where it's still acceptable, where the dotted lines are. Look on the actual uh, mechanism, just in there. So they are just there. I'm going to move the camera around here. I'm trying to zoom in. See, see where's that solid, solid line above there on that, on that black. What do you think there? You see it? That line is right bang in the middle between that shorter bit and the longer line. So that I think is bang on and look at the tension of the belt, it's really nice. Uh, so I think if that was the shift to the left or to the right, as long as it's within the two ranges, whether it's between on the short block or the long block, where that line is, I hope you can see it, just where my fingernail is there, I can just feel it now. That line there is between short and the long and at the moment it's bang in the middle. Right, so furthering from that, we're going to try and so we've located the tension at pulley. The nut, if you look down there, is kind of worn, isn't it? Get my light in there a bit more. It's kind of worn, so I am going to be getting a, a decent spanner. Now, no sockets will fit in this. No, have, no matter how short, so what you can't you align that? There's a the this engine mount is in the way. If the engine mount's not in the way, actually, if you're thinking about it, then it can be done. It's the engine mount that's in the way, uh, so it can't really be done safely without the engine mount because we'll have to support the sump, etc. etc. Wheel off. Etc. Uh, Etc. Et so you can't support two things at once, can you? Right. So let's get a spanner, a long one, with like an inward-facing. So it kind of pokes. Let me try and get my finger on it. So it pokes in like that. And it's, let me try and zoom out. Get a spanner. It faces inwards. Comes out like that almost like a pipe but straight and straight and long estimate that to be what 20 no even that if I was here let's measure it let's measure it right so it'll be picking the ruler straight down there so I need something about a 12 inch mark so there's a, there's a spanner that is on sale, it's about 36 centimetres long, so that'll poke right out here. So it'll be way out here, which is fine. Nice long leverage. So as, what we're, examples of what don't work, so don't bother, normal rings uh, spanners, I think they're called, angled ones, up. won't fit, unless the engine mount was off. And but see, twist it whether it's a bit more room, still won't fit. Engine mounts in the way, All right? Other things that won't work. See how the nut pokes out a little bit. If I had a long one of these, but it were dead flat, it was not enough to grip on, it might slip, and it's only like two sides as well. That ain't gonna work so. Your ring spanner, but ring spanner should be long. And this is no good, this the angle's not enough. It should have like a nice thick bit sticking out. So nice angle light is fine, but nice thick area for it to catch on to. Because I don't want to round that nut off. I think I'm gonna wind it clockwise. Logically otherwise you'll undo the boat. Wind it clockwise to take this belt off. All right, just got this through the post. It's my 330 millimeter length. And it should be 14 one end. So it's exactly as the description was in 
eBay. So 15 pounds it was, not cheap for a spanner. You can sometimes get a whole set for that, but this is this is particularly for the purpose of um, getting to that, trying to undo, uh, well, loosen the um, serpentine belt or the drive belt, which is not the same as the cam belt or the, or the timing belt on this Honda, on the Civic. Notice it's got a nice sharp, I'll slow down a bit, nice sharp cuttings into it and it's and it kind of is perfectly straight so I mean we can test it yeah so I hope you can see my silver I'm just gonna so the main thing is you can see me doing this right it fits in there nicely now the reason why I bought this is I was worried that I was worried that it I might round it off when I use something a bit rubbish. So I'm just checking if I put any force in it. it goes all the way in. Well, yeah, that, oh, that is really tight against there now. See that? I should get a torque. And if I pull it back, it's gripping it all right. So. It may, it may have to be done from uh, below or something. It's gripping it all right. I would have thought you tighten this. It's nice and tight in there. Yeah, see that? So that is the thing that pulls the... See will this mechanism move? See all that there? We're pulling it. So that's the thing. So I've got the right one. Very easy to get from below. So I wanted a perfect fit from a perfect, really good quality. All right. Anyway, I'll try and leave a link in the uh, description below. Uh, so this band is Trident. And so this one was on eBay. 15 pounds? 15.95, something like that. 14 millimeter one and 12 millimeter. Well, you may be able to find it easily. So the nut anyway stuck out maybe uh, the length of from here to here anyway, as you can see. And then this protrusion fitted nicely straight into the nut and that's what you need you want a really tight fitting and you really want uh, one of these spanners that have got a nice sharp kind of cutting to it you don't want the rounded ones you want a nice solid pull and that felt quite solid even though whereas I was pulling back it was quite still quite difficult I can always put something on top of it to give it an extra little tug but that was wonderful so this is what you need uh, so one end looks like that, one end looks like that. Right, so uh, I should be doing that soon. Uh, not today. Next time you see me, I'll be trying to do that. Take it off, so next job, take off the belt, put out the clutch on the aircon, have a look at it, match it up, take a picture, and then try and buy that on eBay and then fit it later. Right, it's so another day. And uh, what I'm going to try and do is now is belt off which looks in very good condition you can see all the someone's changed just recently you can see all the markings on it so the 14 goes in and move it over as much as I can I've got a couple of cable ties ready to tie it over so not there anymore probably not oh I've taken off the rubber hose Fits under there, and there's a hiss, which I think is normal. It's the uh, rubber hose to the air, uh, sorry, water coolant overfill tank. And so that fits on nicely. Move it just over the nut. So, Strong string, I give it that. Um, wonder if it's possible from below, might be easier. So let's have a look. Yeah. 
Let's see if I can take the clutch off without taking the belt off. Well, I've noticed the easiest way to undo this nut, 14 millimeter, and this clutch is use a medium size, so medium size uh, high bar. There's a nut here where the uh, harmonic panel is, and these kind of round things poking out here, the wedge. That's it, that's it. Put you on the top. Put the uh, put the little jump the lead, uh, jump the power on the clutch if you've got any clutch left. That would help. And uh, so I've just there's plenty of space. Do you see that? So there's plenty of space there, and I can't do this two-handed and just wedge it. And uh, the way I, the configuration I've got it there is, I'm uh, tightening it back up. So. Turn it back up, loosen it. So you just need to uh, use that nut just here where my finger is and wedge it against there using a medium size pry bar. And it's, it's only, it's very lightly tightened on that nut. So uh, if I, at this angle, if I undo it, it's all going to fall apart. But, um, in theory, yes, I can change it. Well, what I notice in this error, on this clutch, on this egg on is when I undid this nut somewhat, it started engaging. When I had, obviously, I've jumped the um, jumped the relay, uh, so I've got my T-pin back on. Every time I press using my power tool to give it power, the clutch comes on. Uh, if I tighten it too much, it won't work. I'm loosening it a little bit just below the threshold you know, and it works so I've got the nut the end of the nut uh, bolt flush with the nut and careful not to let that touch there I don't know what will happen I think I did let it touch it there because there's live, live power in the figure um, so as soon as I give it power so I'm just touching it See that? And I don't know if I can hold it. Maybe if I receive, but now touch is on. It's slightly too tight. And it ain't gonna work. Oh, uh, don't worry, I'll let that touch that. There's no, that's the, that's going to the, um, that's going to the uh, bloody coil. Uh, so only, it's only a problem when I press this and I touch the metal frame. Even then, I don't think it's a problem. Let's try that again. I hope you can see. I'm grabbing it properly now. So that now how now I'm just going to tighten that nut a little bit more, and you'll see it won't work. I think I just tightened it a tiny bit more, and it stopped working. So uh, that's odd, right? So it could be that the shims are slightly the wrong size, and it's just a fraction off I need. Now in there, the thread of the bolt is just poking out a tiny bit. I only did it like. Uh, 20 degrees more on the bolt and it stopped working so remember this thing here normally it sits like this when I'm not using aircon when it, I am using aircon this is going to spin like so clockwise and I'm just thinking is the momentum of that enough to undo the nut from there I don't know um, so options in my head take it off put on some sort of um, sh slightly thicker, um, well, I don't remember if we get the, the right one, slightly thicker uh, uh, shim. Is like basically like a washer. They come in also different sizes, or, or what? Will that act as spinning? Will that suddenly catch in? 
catching on the spinning because as that as that inner bolt turns out really you are undoing the nut if there's enough momentum on that nut to keep it in the same spot while it turns it could undo it in theory but the only thing i can do is just run it and see if it works see see if it does it so i'm going to undo it 20 minute 20 degrees more and i know it works if i do that right when i pumped it up full of uh, the right amount of r134 alpha it kind of told me that it gets a faint funny sound coming from here and uh, the pump kind of was seized up or something like that. i'm not 100 percent sure but then i realized there was a leak in the uh, pump it's, there wasn't any fluid left in there so it's a case of do i want to buy a new pump or a scrap pump and put it in it's a lot of hassle um the answer is probably no i've, so I've tightened up the nut a little bit more uh, so it shouldn't kick in under any circumstances it should kick in now but it didn't kick in that's the thing uh, so it's probably for the age of the vehicle it's not worth trying to fix this particular fault but anyway that's how you undo it undo the nut and change the clutch if you wanted to but my pump is leaking I think so it's not worth it last one I ran it I felt inside it wasn't even cool Right, and second thoughts, uh, the following day I switched on the car and the aircon actually came on. Uh, so it was quick going up for me. I was thinking, what, why is that aircon on? Um, it's plenty of pressurised gas, but by the end of the day it stopped working. So this to do with the clutch. The clutch wouldn't come off even though I shorted it. So it could be a problem with the evaporator valve. Well, the, my apologies the expansion valve where the gas expands it could be that it could be that i when i pumped in the fluid it was fl too much fluid and not gas because you may keep the bottle up right i kind of had it sideways and that could have busted the pump who knows but um it's it started working uh so what i'm going to try and do is i'm going to try and adjust the thickness of the shims inside the uh, dis uh the between the gap between the the clutch and the actual uh, body of the uh, air, com uh, air compressor because uh, I did notice it engaged a lot better when there was a bigger gap right so let's do that let's give it another shot let's see what happens once we're down there we're going to be testing the distance the gap between the compressor clutch air gap it says there so it should be between 0.35 millimeters to 0.65 although i noticed when it was higher it was better and maybe it's because it's worn who knows and the compressor core re resistance 3.15 to 3.45 ohms at 20 degrees which is what it is now um I'm not too worried about the gap i'm interested to find out what this is there was a single when i when i take off the connector there was a single connector so I'm going to test that between that and the body of the uh, the compressor. Right, so I'll try and... I'll keep the numbers on head and I'll go underneath. Right, so... My T-pin. So anywhere on the body, I guess. It's not going to be as accurate as the one where you two between the two terminals on, say, a three-pin. But, um... So T-pin is used so you don't shove it in too hard and and uh, break anything. So I know the coil works. So. Okay, what's going on? Power input, body of the... It should be... <coughs> should be grounded. Oh, what was that? Right. Four ohms. So it should be about 30, right? It's a kind of a bit of a weak. But you know, there's enough to stick my anything of metal I put near it. It kind of sticks to it. Look at that. Oh, 20. It's fluctuating, it's hard to tell. If this machine had their peak remembering thing, that would be better. But 
Has even got one. When I measured the gap using the end of here, it came out as one point something, so way over, but it was a worn clutch. And I did, did notice it worked a lot better, actually, when, uh, so what's that, 1.3? Agreed, 1.3 millimetre. So I noticed it did work a lot better when the clutch was poking out, so I'm, I'm inclined to put more shims in rather than lesser shim in or fewer shims in so let's take it apart well i've really showed you how i take it apart i'm just going to carry on persisting on it right with the clutch off doesn't look worn there's no broken parts notice there's a uh, kind of like a central part of it is like a cog on it so let's have a look at the clutch itself Here it is. This sits like that, just a nut that was on 25 newton meters. I'm not sure what all these things are on the side. Just to make it rotate properly, I don't know. It's a bit odd. So I've got oh, I get it. When I tighten this down, it acts as a, a separator between this connecting to the surface and not as soon as there's electrical power put on it. It drags it over, so that's the difference. There's a spring there. This thing is a spring, right? So there should be a shim. Where is it? Let's have a look. I'm going to try and poke that out. I can't do this in two with one hand. Uh, I'm running out of battery as well, so let's poke it out. Do you see? Right now, see that thing I'm taking off? Is actually left behind? I use this screwdriver to push it around. There isn't anything left in it because on the clutch it wasn't. Look how thin that is. Now I know the shims come in different sizes, but I don't think they may be that thin. So let's have a look at the book. Just measured this shim that I took off with a magnet, very fine magnet, uh, 0.8 millimetre. So I thought it was wafer thin, but it's not as thin. Turn it sideways. As I imagine, so it's there for a reason. Let's see if I'm finding anything similar. I don't, I'm not sure I've got anything. I suppose let's try. Before I do that, it's 0.8 diameter outside is in case I need to get a new one. It's about 14 uh, inside diameter. Well, I haven't got anything that fits anywhere near it, it may have to be, call it a day job. 10? 10 mil? <coughs> Oops, sorry. Oh, I just can't believe it. I was just sneezing and the shim I had fell off over it. Is. Uh, excuse me. It's about 10 on the inside, a bit bigger on the outside. 0.5? It's nothing really like it, but you never know, it might fit. Here's the original, there's one similar, small diameter inside. M10's a similar uh, similar diameter inside, but outer is bigger and thicker. So I don't know, let's see if any of them fits. I do want it thicker though, and poking out a bit more. Here's my original. Um, so, notice how it sits on there, like there's the original, you can even see the, the mark where it was sitting. This one sits perfectly, so that, should, that one should go on, even though it's a bit of a smaller diameter. And this one, diameter is just right. So this one's diameter is fine, it's just about the same as that. This one's diameter is too small, I don't think it'll go on. So we can count that one out. I think. Let's do a try it. These ones are much bigger, they fit just over 
and see that? So I wonder. They're kind of a bit rounded as well. They're not good washes, but they're not perfectly flat. So this black one looks better. I think these ones look a bit flat, too thick as well. I think they'll look really bad. You might poke out an awful lot, but I didn't want it poking out. So and these these seem like the same. This one seems like the same quality. So that's like half a mil more. So if this one fits, might be worth getting this one on it with the original. And the original, uh, this one on first, and then the original, and then then this plate. We'll see. I'll let you know how it goes on. Right. Okay. So I have decided on putting this one on first because I don't know what the other end is like but I do know this end can cope with a bigger end if you know what I mean I don't know what the other end is this might be in contact with something that spins I don't know so this one on first this one then that and a bit of grease so I'm upping it by half a mil I don't know if it make any difference I was hoping something like this to really boost, uh, boost it out an awful lot Right, reset. I'll try and film this. If you can't see it, you can hear it. I'm resting the camera on my stomach. Now, what I've chosen is the th thinner, the 0.5. I think the other one was 0.8, the original. Or it could be like a dodgy original, someone left behind. I'm gonna try and get my arm out and I'll watch. See that? So this is the thinner one. So obviously, a magnet is stronger when your thing object is closer, right? And that is definitely clicking now. So when that's on there, doing one hand, I cannot turn that. Right, so that's so I've used a thinner and the recommended. I can't. What did I say? 0.3 to 0.6. I'll repeat myself in just a minute. If you can't see it, if you can't see it, at least you can hear it. You might be able to see it now. I'll move my stomach. <laughs> so I'm just using this on and off the T pin. Just making a good connection. Right. Okay, remember, but don't put the T pins in too tightly or it'll damage it. Right. So, so 0.5 is bang in the middle. I'm just going to tighten that nut just a bit more and then test it again. If you look down, the clutch is turning. Uh, I'm going to do it properly this time. So don't do it like that. Don't press the trigger like that. Wait till it goes like that. Agitate it. You should feel the bottle getting cold. As you do it, that means the bottle is ejected. Sometimes these bottle refills have got fluid in it but no pressure. Funny enough. So we should be releasing gas only, not liquid, otherwise you can screw the thing up. It's slowly, slowly coming up. This 440 grams, 0.4 kg. I don't know if I've got enough. It's going up anyway, slowly. The other day I whacked it, like I just tilted it over and I squeezed it. Nearly bloody broke the pump. I'm hoping all that kind of like settled itself down. I can feel the bottle getting really cold, that's why I'm going to put a pair of gloves on. Right, the end result is I end up well, not in the end result, but I filled it up to 70% of what I needed because I ran out of um, uh, aircon fluid, R134 Alpha. Because uh, uh, you know it, because it didn't go up anymore, didn't get any colder, and you, you pulled it out, you squeezed the trigger, nothing came out basically, right? The pressure equalised. So I put the, make sure you put the relay back on. And uh, obviously I tested it. Feels cold to the touch. And that is perfect. Uh, so I'm going to squeeze a bit more air con fluid when I get the time. And look, with the, uh, can you see it? And the bottom spinning there. Yeah, you should see it better now. So it's no problem, yeah? It's working 100%. So thumbs up for that. So the problem was, 
the guy had it, didn't look after it properly. The thing ran out of juice by itself as they do. He neglected it probably for years, left it, left it, wouldn't refill it. Probably too stingy, I don't know what, just too lazy. Who knows, this guy was not looking after his car. Although they took it in for service, they must have did a bad job. Whatever, whatever, I'm not sure. But, so what happens is the pump, as it dried up, it just, uh, so he took it in for repairs. I don't know what they thought, I don't know what happened. But they, or the clutch was wearing out, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how the clutch works in the system, apart from get it going or not. So the thing was on 0.8, the shim was 0.8. Uh, I may be wrong, uh, I may measure it again, I can't remember, I think it was 0.8 mil. And uh, the thing is, the recommended is 0. Point, uh, bang on should be 0. 0.5, so it'd be 0. 0.35, 0. 0.65, so 0. 0.5 is bang on. So I swapped it for a 0.5 with the same quality, slightly different thickness. Don't know how I managed to find one uh, in my box, but I had one. And and the clutch clicked on, you know, it clicked on. It wasn't a more distance I needed, it was a closer distance. I did tighten the nut a little bit more. It still worked, so that's it. So check that distance. The resistance, it was like all over the shop because there's no, there's no three pins, it's just one pin. So it was all over the shop. I couldn't really rely on the resistance and not a three pin one. But the definite distance was measured at, I think it was um, 0.8, wasn't it? So it should be 0.5. The shim knocked it out. No, yeah. Well, anyway, changing her thinner shim, the, the closer the clutch got to the um, electromagnet, the closer, the easier it was to just to, because the closer it gets, the closer it gets, and it suddenly snaps, right? If it's too far away, it's not going to help. As soon as it gets closer, 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 and then. Uh, if it was a little bit fractionally closer, it would just speed up and then snap on. Right, so, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you're not yet subscribed and leave a comment. If you have any similar problems, I'll try, always try and help. I always try and give feedback if I can help if possible. See you next time.